All right, looks like we're ready to go. Okay, so welcome to the April 9th meeting of the Northampton Energy and Sustainability Commission meeting. Um, this is a um, fully Zoom meeting. It is recorded and will be available at Northampton Open Media um, at, um, after, um, at some point afterwards. Um, we have, we are missing some folks, but we still have a quorum. So we'll run through the agenda items uh, today. And let me just um, adjust my screen here. Um, so we've got a few items to vote on and some other updates. Um, and first I will start um, the meeting with public comment. And these are items that are not on the agenda. And um, I will take um, Adele first with her hand raised. Thank you very much. Um, I was on a uh, PVPC meeting this morning at which Chris Mason uh, presented. And um, the topic came up about whether Northampton was going to apply try to apply for the climate leader program and i was unable to answer that but i thought that this would be a good place to uh, raise that question and i realized that you can't necessarily answer my question at this point but um, it would be helpful to know whether uh, northampton is intending to apply for the climate leader program and uh, and <clears throat> how people might help. And secondly, um, uh, you mentioned, Carolyn, uh, that Northampton Open Media would have the Zooms recording of the meetings, and yet um, Northampton Open Media seems to have very few of the recordings of the meetings. And um, I don't know whether there's anything to do about that, but people have asked me how they can uh, watch the previous meetings and, um, and they have not been able to find them. And I went on there and was similarly unable to find most of them. So just for your information, thank you. Okay, thanks, Adele. Appreciate that. Um, and j just on that note, we send when we're done. It's we send them to Northampton Open Media. I don't know if they've been regularly being sent over the last. I know the last one was posted. I don't know if the ones previous to that were, but um, typically we send it to them, and then they review it and make it, um, you know, clean it up, and then post it, um, but we can certainly look into that. They aren't the official record, just so everyone knows, it's not the official record of the meeting. The official record of the meeting are the minutes of the meeting. Um, any other public comment? Okay, great. Um, uh, right, um, next. Um, on the agenda is just a quick update for the Climate Action and Project Administration um, Department. Um, you probably have read in the, um, the press release that um, Carol Collins has left and returned for Greenfield. Um, so um, we are, um, that position um, actually Ben has graciously um, offered to step in in the interim, but not till the end of May, I believe it is. Um, but we are also working on the hiring for the energy officer that was vacant from last fall. Um, and that's moving ahead as well. Um, and uh, so hopefully, you know, by, by May, we'll have those two slots um, filled up and can continue, you know, in the interim, of course, um, central services and our department um, and other departments are working together to continue to um, do the work that's necessary that was 
sort of ongoing already. Um, and part of that, uh, we'll, you know, we're looking at um, on this agenda, it, it was, relates to funding and moving projects relative to updating the solar arrays. And um, so that continues to move forward to the extent that it can with the um, diminished capacity. But um, the, it's just around the corner where we should be um, staffed back up. So I just wanted to let folks know about that. Um, and um, I don't know if any other, if there are any other updates from other um, departments um, or general updates that anyone has they want to contribute. If not, I will move ahead. Um, <clears throat> Um, just on the actually sort of related to Kappa, but also updates and related to Adele's comment about the climate leader program. You know, we're continuing to get information, obviously, from um, the state and Chris Mason directly about different programs. And so we've, we're following up on those as they come. Um, I don't um, know in particular about the climate leader program or if Carol had been working on that with Chris previously. So I don't, um, I, I can look into it, but I don't know for sure. Go ahead, Ben. Um, so I, I can speak to that from two perspectives. One, I've, I have been working with DOER in developing the climate leader program, or at least the uh, zero carbon or decarbonization planning component of it that all climate leaders would have to do. So uh, that, that's kind of this, this process and there's a, a data in, input uh, part of it. So I've been involved with that um, and I've been working with the town of Natick on doing that part of it. Um, as the person who will shortly <laughs> uh, have something to say about it as, as uh, interim CAFA director. Um, I would say this might be something to uh, be to hold off on. Um, and the reason being that it's going to be time consuming and um, I kind of I'd rather somebody else uh, went through the the unpleasant process of <laughs> of, of beta testing this thing. And then the other part of it is it's going to be really, really hard to meet the electric vehicle requirement uh, for that because it's it really does reach across all types of city departments and there are not, as far as I can tell, actually vehicles available uh, in all cases. So I think that's it's not something to just jump head, head first into despite the fact that there is some additional funding available once you are a climate leader. Great, thanks, Ben. Um, <clears throat> all right, so next on the agenda is um, a, a, a couple of items that were, I think on the previous agenda, we didn't get a chance to get to them. Um, and um, one of them, I actually one of them sort of falls off because we, um, already had, um, as a committee, had approved the funds, but there's a vote on the NESP revolving funds. So I put in the agenda sort of what the revolving funds are for and where they, um, how they are seated. And um, uh, basically there's this um, pot of money, which I forgot to check with Pat. I thought he was going to be on the call today and would give me this information, but Pat is not available. Um, so we have a revolving fund that basically comes from the um, credits from the solar arrays from the um, that we get in the city. And that was, um, we hadn't been collecting those for a little while, there was a gap. And so part of this is sort of like, um, you know, um, Carol, Josh and Carol both were trying to get us back up so that we were getting all the credits that we were due. Um, but there also needs to be some um, repair for those and that um, 
an installation of a modem to make it easier to sort of um, to sort of tabulate what's going on. So at any rate, there the two items for a vote really, which comes down to one item, um, was adding the rails to the senior center solar um, roof array, and it would be six thousand dollars. Basically, our the central services department is ready to go. Um, with um, ordering and making sure this, you know, overseeing the installation of these items, um, the solar array, um, Florence Field modem, and labor as well. Um, both of those things can move forward as soon as the money is allocated. And so I would need a vote for using the revolving fund to um, fund both of those. And what happens is, the Energy Committee votes to um, allocate the resources, the mayor then reviews it and then ultimately makes the decision and then the funds can be released. Um, and basically we're just ready to go once the money is allocated. So um, the solar array maintenance and the field modem cost was on the pr previous agenda, but I think um, uh, Carol didn't realize, I that um, the committee had already voted to replace that modem last summer. So um, it's actually less than what the committee voted on last summer, the actual cost of that. So either the price changed or maybe there's a new, uh, different modem. So anyway, I don't, technically we don't need a vote on that one because you already voted to do that last late summer. Um, so really it's about the $6,000 item. So if anybody wants to make a motion and a second, then we can, or, and then we can open that up for discussion. Go ahead, Ben. Can you just remind me what is the purpose of the sun dog rails? Yeah, sorry, I should have put that in. <clears throat> um, so they were having, um, just gonna list up again. Um, the senior center was um, having issues with the um, the roof and um, ice, I believe, on the roof. Um, so um, the snow melt from the solar panels on the senior center, it was cooling on the flat membrane and Northeast Solar um, recommended that the rails would slow the snow so it would um, um, then prevent that from sort of ponding or pooling on the on the roof membrane. So I kind of want to ask Louie, who might have seen it, just just because I haven't actually looked at it. You know, my my first instinct is if you have a water problem on a roof because it's not draining, the solution ought to be to make sure it drains. Um. <laughs> Yeah, Louis, any thoughts? Yeah, the um, the solar panels are on the pitch part of the roof and the kitchen area in is a low slope roof next to it. The snow is sliding off the solar panels and piling up on the low slope roof. And what they're proposing to do is use this, this, this rails to slow that to hold snow up above so that rather than crashing down in giant uh, sheets, it comes a little at a time. And the fact that there's less water, uh, there's less snow buildup on the low slope roof is gonna cut down on the amount of water that ponds there. Just making one big pile of snow into three smaller piles of snow, assuming that the low slope roof can handle the melt from the smaller snow pile. Okay. Um, it's been a discussion that's been there since the very beginning of that um, installation. Okay. Uh, do, do you have an opinion? I think they need to do it. Okay. And that that's the best solution? I I believe it is. It, I believe it's the only solution at this okay, point. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Or, yeah, so, so it's the best one. Yeah. And I can just show you... Um... Unfortunately, this is an older picture, but I think this will um, show the two roof lines coming together. Oops. Um, and Louie, you can um, 
the, the panels are on this roof, right, Louis? Mm -hmm. And so here is the flat roof of the um, where the where the snow is shedding. So if you put the rails up here, mm -hmm. then it'll slow that. Uh, that's, okay. that's it. That's exactly right. Yep. Okay. And then if yeah, you, I mean, reason. when you go into the, you can see the panels in this view. See right there mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. this, and then this is the flat roof down here. Yeah, and they're just holding snow back so that it, so that it, as it melts, it melts with the smaller quantities and the um, drains for this flat roof aren't overwhelmed by the amount of melt. At any given moment. All right, I would I would move to uh, fund this. I second it. That was Deb. Okay. All right. Uh, any other discussion? Or you do a roll call? <clears throat> okay. Um, Deb Clemmer. Um, yes. Uh, Louis Hasbrook. Yes. Uh, Marissa Elkin. Yes. Uh, Tim Smith. Yes. Angie Gregory. Yes. Eric Winkler. In favor. Hank Ben File. Yes. And I would vote in favor as well. So that's unanimous. Thank you. <clears throat> and let's see. Any um, counselor updates? Uh, uh, Carolyn, I I have. Uh, I can't see if Debbie's got her hand up, but oh, I was going to okay. say something. Go, go ahead. It might be the same. Uh, thing. You go first. Yeah. So you go first, <laughs> Debbie, and, I'll, and then I'll follow up. <laughs> Okay, so um, Councillor Elkins and I um, were working on the paint steward stewardship resolution, um, and um, we had two readings at our last city council meeting, and it passed unanimously. Um, it's going to the House Ways and, Me Ways and Means Committee on um, April 22nd, which is why we had to do two readings um, at the last meeting. And um, he has... Uh, way more than 41 resolutions from different towns and cities throughout Massachusetts. So um, he has really good support for it. Great, thanks. All right, All right. Uh, can I pipe in now? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yep. Okay. Go ahead, uh, Marissa. I, I was sorry. I, I can't see, and I it didn't sound like it sounded like Debbie was done. So if if she's not, I'll. No, I'm done. Yeah, yeah you're good. Okay. Yeah, I I want to add uh, that it was really great to work with Debbie on that, and uh, I'm just glad that we were able to get that passed. I wanted to add a note, um, just to say the other thing that's in front of council right now is that it is budget season, and. I feel like it's worth um, noting um, for, to this commission in particular is that um, we are facing um, school, well, I would say be, because of issues with funding and the budgets with the, the schools and, and, uh, and so forth, there is before, there, we're coming, gonna be coming under pressure and the mayor is gonna be coming under pressure to, um, to dip into our uh, the city's um, various stability funds to shore up the the school's recurring expenses budget, and I just want to flag that for this commission because um, there are uh, candidly there are counselors who don't understand <laughs> that our um, ability to uh, finance um, capital improvement projects, of which you know, which are what funds many of the projects that this commission's, you know, most interested in and, and supportive of. All of our sustainability upgrades to our schools and our city buildings and, and other measures, um, you know, that depend on us having a healthy fiscal stability and healthy stability 
um, st stability um, funds. And so I, I guess all I'm, I'm saying right now is please keep your eyes and ears open to what, to what is being suggested the mayor do to solve the problems uh, that the school committee has caused by continuing to um, to basically fund their recurring expenses of with essentially deficit spending. I mean, we're not allowed to do deficit spending. We always have to balance the budget. But if we keep dipping into our stability funds, including the ones that, that fund these capital projects that are so important to this commission's work and, and our interests, then, well, we, we just aren't gonna have any after a while. Um, and so I, that's, that's, that's what's happening in council right now. And that's what um, I'd ask for you guys to, and, and if you're interested in, in the city meeting and sustainability and, uh, and climate goals that, um, you know, please be, be asking the mayor questions. Please be asking council questions about how, how we're going to achieve these goals if we um, don't have the bond rating we need to borrow at reasonable levels, if we don't have the sustainability funds, uh, I'm sorry, the stability funds and the capital improvement project stability funds uh, that we need to have because we have uh, thrown them at a problem that it doesn't solve. <laughs> um, so that's it. That's that's what I have to say. <laughs> yeah. um, I agree with everything that Councillor Elkins just said, and I just want to add and correct me if I'm wrong, Councillor, but um, we kind of got to this place because we have been using non-recurring funds. And um, if we do throw some money at the problem again this year, it's going to be worse next year. So um, in everything that Councillor Elkins said too, just uh, ask questions and reach out to anybody if you want to know more about what's going on and how money's used. Great, thank you. Um, let's see. Um, do we have a uh, department head reports? Do any, does um, Louie or Tim um, have any items for school, Smith Oak or building department? I, I, I could talk a little bit about energy code stuff from the building department's perspective. Um, the energy code, we're, we're reaching, approaching the point where there's going to be one energy code and one building code, and they'll be merged, and there won't be any uh, changes in the works. There won't be a, um, after July 1st, 2024, uh, energy code is going to be stable um, and the building code should be in full force and effect. So um, it won't be this process of trying to figure out what time it is that the building permit has been applied for or, or what day it is or what month it is or what year it is. Um, interestingly, um, we sorted through a project and it came down to a week that the energy code that the building had to address um, Change, would have changed a week after the permit was submitted. So it's it's been complicated and it'll be awfully nice to have just a, a one, you know, level playing field, a one set of rules um, for whatever projects there are going forward. That all said, I don't think the dust is quite settled yet, but um, it, it should soon. Great, so you're saying July 1 of this, of this year? Of, of this year. Will be there the, will be a building code, and within the building code it, will be an energy section. Right, and it won't change the week after next. <laughs> so. Okay, great. That is good news. Not that I know very much about it, but every time people come in for projects, they want to know, what do I have to design to? <laughs> so, um, and, great. and we Thanks. won't have to say, well, what day are you going to bring your permit application in? Right. Um, Tim, were you um, about to um, provide an update? No, I wasn't. I, I have nothing. Okay. So. Okay. <laughs> um, 
All right. Um, for planning and sustainability, um, you know, um, we're sort of still collaborating about the hub and looking at energy systems um, relative to getting that building transitioned. Um, you know, we're also looking long term at trying to figure out um, that transition overall with private buildings, um, given our um, given the fact that um, Eversource is not allowing extensions and is being pretty hard and fast on cutting off um, existing gas customers um, after two years of no, non-use. And um, this is um, becoming, you know, more and more a real issue um, that sort of will accelerate our need to transition both private and, you know, our um, municipal buildings, maybe to a lesser extent. Um, but I think it also potentially gives us an opportunity if we can work through the networks to figure out um, how to facilitate those transitions um, on the front end so people aren't surprised. Um, one thing that's holding up the hotel um, on Con Street right now is this very issue with Eversource um, that they were not aware of previously. So this is really going to be, um, it, you know, we, we've got to work to support um, businesses um, as well as residents in the community to figure out to help with that transition. Um, and then the only other thing, it's not really an update, it's more of a teaser. We are still working on trying to get um, um, the contract finalized for a new vendor for bike share so that we can bring bike share back this spring. It'll probably be late spring now, um, but we wanna make sure we get it right and that we don't have any hiccups um, going forward. That's gonna be another um, funding piece that we're going to have to work on for the long term to really make it a vibrant alternative transportation um, system and network. Um, but we have a good, we feel like we've selected a good team that understands that and has that mission as well and has success in other communities with really um, ginning up um, ridership. So we're really excited to be able to move forward. So we're right, we're, we'll probably be able to um, provide some information, more specific information in um, a couple of weeks, I'm hoping. Um, and that's all I have on that. Did I miss anybody for departments? Um, I don't think so. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so um, I will say, I know that just um, as Marissa noted, the issues about funding and budget, and I'm going to step in and speak a little bit for central services, but central services had a, several capital um, funding requests that just went through city council last week and got approved. Some of them um, um, a lot of them related to building upgrades um, and energy enhancements. So that was really important, but there was a lot of discussion about should we be putting that money to something else instead of to these necessary building upgrades. So um, I know I didn't speak entirely about um, central services plan, but I just wanted to sort of put that out there um, as well. Um, okay. So um, this next item on the agenda is a little bit, is gonna be in flux for a little while. Um, so um, Ben um, broached the idea of potentially thinking about different um, format for the meetings and talking about ways that the commission could um, really sort of um, provide sort of more involved and integrated um, discussion about potential solutions and feedback to projects. So um, I just have this as an item on the agenda to think about if anybody has just to, as a starting as an opening of this conversation and thinking about ways that um, the commission might um, see value in a different framework for the conversations. Um, if there's anything that folks are itching to think about in terms of a regular agenda item or um, in particular sort of focusing on one project or one topic 
or one issue. Um, so really it's just meant as sort of an open discussion. Um, if anybody um, has any ideas now or, um, and then we can bring back, if we don't sort of resolve this, which I don't think we will sort of bring that to subsequent meetings and continue to sort of hash through this and figure out what makes sense for everybody. Um, Angie, you're up first. Thanks, Carolyn. Um, I think one thing that I would want to maybe bring up um, as a topic I haven't heard yet since um, I've been on the commission um, as a focus area, but I saw previously there was a subcommittee before in NESC that was related to like landscape pollination, something to that degree. Mm -hmm. Is that familiar? Yes, there was what a was pollinator it? subcommittee. Okay, and um, yeah, I think that was the name of it. I think Rich and Tim, you were on that, right? Um, yeah. yeah. And then there were some uh, just general, um, well you, Tim, why don't you describe <laughs> sort of what your committee was doing? Yeah, so we were looking for sites that we could put some uh, pollinator habitat, plant some vegetation. Um, and okay. the first site we picked was across from um, the driving range by the VA. Uh huh. It's a it's a four acre field. So actually, I, I was going to get the seed last year, but just the ground never really dried out enough to get out and plow it. Um, but I actually sent the order in this morning, and we're going to try to keep it plowed, plow it once this summer. And then harrow it a bunch of times, and you you dormant seed it in November. So that will be the the first site that four acre plot. Okay. Yeah. So I guess um, I guess in general, I don't know if that um, subcommittee is is still actively meeting um, behind the scenes or not, or if if that could be something that we continue to do. But I I feel that maybe. You know, we have a lot of um, knowledge and discipline expertise here on this commission um, for the building and energy use, which is very valuable and, you know, necessary as we're as we're moving forward as a commission. I'm also kind of make, wanting to make sure we're kind of true to our namesake and also include the broader sustainability components beyond um, the building use um, aspects that, that um, you know, rightfully so are um you know, getting a lot of our of our time and attention. So I'm, and if that should happen through a subcommittee, um, that would be good to know. Or if it could just be a part of our regular um, commission meetings to include topics related to, you know, landscape management. I know um, central services likely covers a lot of ground management and, um, you know, how we're going to be building and um, adapting our landscapes to be climate resilient and you know, following anything that might already be in a comprehensive sustainability plan. Um, and then just seeing how our commission can kind of help steward either some of these smaller projects or just um, in general, kind of a, a more strategized plan going forward. Yeah, and just to answer, I don't think, and Tim, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think, I think the committee sort of stopped a meeting at the end of the summer last year. They did a lot of work on sort of evaluating best practices, um, where it might make sense to um, invest and also do demonstration mm -hmm. um, um, planting areas. And I don't, I think it's just sort of, they came up with a plan and that's why they stopped meeting. And then actually this committee funded the seeds, um, the purchase of the um, seeds so that um, Tim and his folks could initiate that and start that work. Um, and so I think it probably makes sense if there are enough people that um, want to um, sort of continue the conversation in general and sort of what's the next step and how do we evaluate the benefits of um, this first sort of pilot project or are there other ways to um, implement this or, or working with, you know, the high school or the other schools to think to engage some of the students and maybe doing something at the schools? I think it also makes sense. And unfortunately, Rich isn't here. But I think when we're mm -hmm. talking bigger picture about budgets and managing some of the larger areas that both um, but DPW is having an increasingly hard time in overall maintenance. And so this is um, probably a strategy to think about to help with that situation. Um, yep. And he obviously can speak to that much better 
than um, anyone on this call from his years of experience. Um, but I think that's a component as well that makes sense to sort of wrap into the conversation. That sounds great. Yeah. So it sounds like it was a little yeah. bit more set up, almost like a task force, and they kind of completed their proposal and have a path for implementing that project. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, great. Thanks. Hi, Carolyn. Yeah. Carolyn. Uh, yes. Marissa. If I could just add add a little bit to to that, um, I was going to echo what you just mentioned about Rich uh, Rich Parcelletti. Um, it seems like it that's very much his lane. Um, and as a general matter, I um, I know that he's he seems to not. Um, and I don't mean this criticism. We're all very busy, but I he's not able. He's not on a lot of these meetings. Um, and I wonder if we might, you know, be able to uh, to see if uh, just just reach out to reach out to him, or um, because I, I feel like it's pretty Im important that that's his lane. The other thing too is, as far as that particular project, the other person who was on that was Rachel Mayori, um, mm -hmm. and so maybe uh, we might on that particular project, maybe somebody else could um, step up and. Uh, yeah. And, and, and pitch in on that. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. All right, Ben. Yeah. I, I don't want to take too much time. So it, it, this concept of uh, not just getting department head feedback where it's a report out, look, here's what we're doing, here's what we're planning on doing, but more open to uh, here's a problem we have, or here's an expense we have. Is there a a, a more sustainable way to do what we're doing that could save us some money, you know, so, so allowing us and the resources that, that, that are in on this committee to know what are some problems super early in the process or, you know, or where they've really stumped somebody. Um, and maybe that makes it worth Rich's time to show up if he's like, instead of just kind of sitting here and listening and then, voting once in a while he's got here's a problem i need help solving it if we can be more useful maybe it's worth uh donna's time to say actually i'd like to designate somebody else for the next such and such a period because here's a category of problem that i that i want to solve that's what i'm I, you know so i think that the um the the, the pollinators could be one of these multi-solving uh, examples where where we could be proactive for it, um, where the department's bringing in problems. That's all I have to say. I want to hear Tina. <laughs> so uh, hold on. Um, just so, um, is there anybody else on the commission before I open it up to public comment about this issue? Okay. Um, go ahead, Tina. Hi. Thanks for letting me speak. Um, I and if you could just state your name and address, oh, sorry, that would yeah. be great. Uh, Tina Cornell, I live at 45 Carolyn Street in Florence and um, part of Mother's Up Front Northampton and I have two kids at the high school. Um, my daughter is a leader at the of the environmental club at the high school and for the last two years they've been talking about wanting to do pollinator friendly gardens uh, somewhere on the school grounds because they see a lot of lawn and a lot of habitat like areas that could be native ha uh, native species habitat and they haven't known who to talk to, where to go and they've you know, just I think it's it's difficult for student groups sometimes to um, find adults that can steer them in the right direction. And I did I did have an email with Tim Smith about reaching out about what task force had been working on and whether that might be a connection. But there are you know connections in the community of people that do want to help with all this stuff, and it's such a valuable resource. And um, you know, I know on Mothers Out Front we've talked about this as a an interest of ours as well, um, helping people convert lawns, things like that. So, you know, don't overlook the fact that there are people in this community that really want to help with this kind of work. And um, just obviously we need to make connections to help that happen. And I hope that the high schoolers can continue to work on this project next year if you all are, you know, open to having somebody speak with them or, you know, uh, especially if there's a, if there is a pollinator task force, that type of group subgroup thank you thanks go ahead then so i i want to try to 
ch test this out as, as an opportunity to see, well, what happens? So Tina said, you've got a bunch of high schoolers who want to do, uh, who want to help out with the um, pollinators. We have Tim who's gaining experience actually implementing a pollinator habitat. So I want to ask Tim, let's say you had a bunch of high schoolers who wanted to help. What could so, they do and what would they actually be impractical to ask them to do? Right. So actually, I, I spoke with we're, we're, we're buying the seed from Prairie Moon Nurseries. And I asked, you know, so these are going to be like weed seeds, very tiny. So I asked, how do you actually um, farm them to a planter? I have a brilliant plant, a brilliant planter, but I think the seed is too fine. And he said, basically, you go out and throw it by hand. You mix some sawdust in and you, and you throw it out that way. Or you have to get a very specialized cedar, which I'm not sure where to get. So given that you have a fact that a bunch of young kids that would want to help, mm -hmm. we would, we would you know, get 15 kids in a row and march up and down the field and, and do those four acres for as many, many people we could get. That would be a huge help. So how, how could we get from that to yep. getting those students? We, we know that Tina knows one student yep. <laughs> who's in charge, who, who worked with other students. How, how could we get that from this concept to something where you actually get the help when you need it? So this is, this is something we're going to dormant seed in November around Thanksgiving, you know, after everything's died down. And, and, and so if we just are in contact throughout the summer um, and, and just leading up to it, we, we have enough time to plan and, and figure out what, what time is best for people to be around. And put a group I'm happy together. to I'm happy to be in touch with Tim about that and then spread the information over to the environmental club to recruit kids or get the club to come over and help with that effort. Yep. That sounds like a great effort. So I think this is I, this yep. seed that we purchase is really made for like a wetter ground because that that property across from Scotty's is has got an awful wet section to it. But I know there'll be some left over if there's if there's parts of the high school that would have to take that. You know they've got some lower land there. I don't know if that would fit down there or, or or if it would work there. I think the so bigger who, question is who who makes decisions about school grounds and they have no idea yep. who those people are. So yeah, I don't know. Well I would I, I normally I would talk to Raleigh, but Raleigh retired, so I'm not sure who's in <laughs> who's in charge of that now. I can reach well, out. I think Tony I right now is is taking up some of that at um Kuzner's um but I think they, you know, I, I would think between central services and DPW, that there's probably someone who would be making those decisions. Okay. We'll do some investigating with them. Thank you. One of the models, I'm involved with some invasive species removal, and it seems that we need, um, an, there needs to be an organization of some sort, some kind of an organization that gather people together. Um, and then some people with expertise um, who, who will sort of join, who, who will agree to provide some expertise um, for the sponsoring organization. Um, so for instance, if, if uh, there was a, uh, an organization that had access in some fashion or another to, um, half an acre of potential pollinator meadow space um, and they could get and they could gather people together to sit down and say even if it was zoom with a some kind of a presentation about this is how you plant a pollinator meadow you'd leave it to the organization to to get the volunteers together and hopefully um, some ex the expertise would come from um, and, and potentially that's what NESC could do would be to provide the expertise on um, on how to do a pollinator. So, but but put those two pieces together, but leave it to an organization to be able to gather the the individuals together and and allow the a, a group like NESC to to bring the expertise to bear on it. Um, and 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 along along with uh, um, and then there'd be a work day or a work half day or a work morning. So, I mean, in this case, right, we, we've got Tim may have the expertise now. It sounds like he's kind of developed how, how to do it on this piece of property. He's got the equipment. Um, 
and I guess in in this case, it, it seems like the trick is to help the students go from wish to help to mm -hmm. have a way to actually connect with Tim so that they show up when he needs them and they've got a plan for it. Mm -hmm. Maybe that could be something like, and I'm volunteering Tim to do work here, <laughs> where Tim shows up to one of their environmental club meetings and says, here's what I'm doing and here's when I'm doing it and here's the help that I need. And then maybe yeah, we I... solve that. <laughs> Or, or the corollary of the environmental club could go to Tim and say, we have 1111 um, energetic young, young people that, and how can they, how do you think they could do this? And then, and, and have Tim's expertise. And like I said, maybe a half a, half a cup full of seeds, but the, the organization, the, the organization that, that can gather together the workers. Yeah, e either of those scenarios would work. I, I don't mind going down to the high school. They could come up to the to the um, Smith Vogue. We could get in a van if, if it's in the afternoon. Take a drive out there, look at the site. I can go through the um, the custom blend that they're making for us. Mm -hmm. So Tina, would it make sense for yeah. you to tell your kid mm -hmm. you should get in touch with Tim? Mm -hmm. Here's something that the city actually needs and could turn into a program that extends. Mm -hmm. um, and then we could find out how it goes. Yes. That might be yeah. the end of what NESC has to do is making that connection and see what happens. That sounds good. I, and I think having Tim either come to one of their meetings or um, probably that would be a great place to start if he's willing to do that. I know they're on Wednesdays yeah. every other week on uh, okay. around six o'clock. That'd be wonderful. Okay. Yep. Look what we just did. <laughs> I know, it's so great. Thanks for presenting that. <laughs> um, okay, any other solutions we can create right now on the fly in the next 20 minutes? <laughs> um, okay, so I think... Um, to, it sounds like to be continued. Does anybody have any other ideas besides pollinator subcommittee? Is anybody burning with other ideas about subcommittees or should we um, sort of cogitate on that a little bit and move um, forward? Eric, like you have an idea. Yeah, I, I um, well, Ben and I <clears throat> had a conversation about technology and markets and business opportunities. Um, and that's, <clears throat> that's an area that I'm, I'm kind of interested in personally. Um, and so um, from, from a subcommittee standpoint, it, you know, I know Ben did a lot of work over the last bunch of months with the city departments and um I think that you know it might be might be interesting to have a more formal process to continually look at technology and business practices that you know can help um, you know help the city move move forward with their goals as well as be more efficient with uh, things like money, which seems to be an issue these days. Um, so. I, I'm gonna just throw that out there that there's 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 probably a good reason to have some kind of more formal um, uh, grouping that that addresses technology and I, I, I'll call it business practices because it's sort of the way that the city conducts business relative to infrastructure, procurement of energy resources, and even, the possibility of engaging in some sort of markets that allow us to monetize um, our option on energy, which is something that um, <clears throat> lots of people in New England participate in uh, uh, and across the country. So I'll leave that as a suggestion. I, I do kind of have a question about how subcommittees work. Are they open meeting? You know, do they have to have agendas or can people actually 
have a conversation in a coffee shop um, and try and, and try and solve a, solve a problem or, um, or, um, or that kind of thing. So that, that, that I'll just sort of leave that with a question. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the answer is any official subcommittee, um, do, does need to have posting 48 hours notice posting you can meet in a coffee shop, but it has to be posted that you're meeting at the coffee shop. Um, and then you do have to produce minutes um, of subcommittee meetings. Um, so certainly um, staff support for posting the agendas and the minutes can, um, you know, can be provided, but um, that that would be required if it were just sort of ad hoc and you and two other people decided to meet one day and talk about stuff and then bring it to the um to the full committee that's not necessarily considered a subcommittee but if anything sort of formally created and said okay these set of people are going to be and we're going to name it this subcommittee then it follows up a meeting well yeah yeah you know i i i'll just follow up and just say that you know that might be a more appropriate venue to get into some heavy duty technical, you know, thermal fluids types of conversations or, uh, you know, microeconomic solutions to, you know, our operations. Those are things that, um, you know, can be brought to the full committee in a, in a synthesized way to, to, um, determine whether that makes sense, but leave the, leave the tech, uh, the technical stuff to a subcommittee that can, can, uh, talk about megawatts and demand charges and transmission and demand response and things like that, 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 um, you know, that the city needs to, have as part of its vernacular needs to needs to be a full player so that, right all right thank you um adele i see your hand raised <clears throat> yes i'm trying to turn on my video and i'm having trouble for some reason oh okay so um building on um what eric just presented um, I would like to suggest for consideration that um, a subcommittee on um, energy coaching would be very relevant for this committee. Um, and, you know, many communities have energy coaching programs and people love them. And there's a crying need for an energy coaching program in Northampton. And um, I would think that that would make a very useful subcommittee at this point. Great. Thanks, Fidel. Um, all right. Anybody else with comments on this or any other item? We do not have minutes yet. I will get them for the next meeting and hopefully this from this meeting as well. Can I just follow up on Adele's point? Because <laughs> it got me thinking. Um, I, I, I do think that that's an area that um, we have resources that could be utilized in, in the city. And in, in particular, I'm, I would be interested to see a subcommittee like that specifically focus on energy efficiency and distributed generation. I think folks... Folks could definitely use help understanding the process for, for example, residential solar um, or what's involved in, you know, getting a whole home, you know, efficiency uh, evaluation and then and then considering considering that and using using those resources to maybe pull together some good pamphlets that help people understand um, you know, the magnitude of these types of, of efforts and the economics of these types of these types of things would be very helpful for the for um, for the residents and, and businesses for that matter. So I, I second the idea of a some kind of mechanism to 
do more outreach. Thank okay. you. Great. Thanks. Um, anyone else, any parting comments before we adjourn? Okay. Um, all right. Well, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I second it. Second. Did anybody move to adjourn? I can't move to adjourn because I'm a chair. I'll move to adjourn then. Okay, great. Thanks. I'll second. Thanks. Okay. Um, Deb. Yes. Uh, Louis. Yes. Kim. Yes. Angie. Yep. Eric. Yep. Yep. Marissa. Yes. And Ben? Yes. Okay. And I think I'll support that as well. Thank you all. Appreciate it. And um, stay in touch. We'll see you soon.